So you would think that making a plate would be the easiest thing to make out of clay. It's just a flat thing. For me, this has been the hardest form to produce. Extreme care has to be taken when handling them so as not to produce stress cracks which lead to breakages and warping in the kiln. But it is not just that. There are so many types of plates and bowls in Japan and many of them produced the same way for over a hundred years. To try and compete with that and find my own voice has been extremely intimidating and challenging. To produce something that in my eyes can find a place in this extremely oversaturated market of tableware is a big challenge. Hopefully, with enough practice and design development, I will arrive at something that I am happy with. Predominantly, I make pottery with extremely basic tools, using a banding wheel and hand moulding techniques. This allows me to work with minimal mess whilst being with my children, who are undertaking their own projects. So this led me to hand moulding plates on the banding wheel and using slump moulds that I throw on the wheel and bisque fire. I still like to create texture on my plates, as is true for the rest of the forms I create. I have a few textures inspired by nature that I keep coming back to. Rock, where I tear, cut and rub the clay to emulate the rock formations all around my house. Grass, where I use my pinky to mark repetitive strokes into the clay and allow surface cracks to appear on the outside, representing cracks in the soil. Wave and landscape. I use my three fingers in a mountain shape to follow the undulations on the rim of a piece, creating a soft landscape. Using the same finger formation, I can add swirls of clay to a piece emulating waves. Bark. This is where I rub clay onto a surface. And once again, using my pinky, I work this into the form and create textural lines emulating wood grain. There are a few other variations to these techniques, which I can go into in another video if anyone is interested. For this tableware set, I will be using the bark texture on slump moulded plates. I start off by rolling a slab of clay for my wheel thrown slump moulds made from bisque fired clay. The bisque pottery does a really good job of absorbing the moisture from the bowl, so it can be removed relatively quickly from the mould after I work on the textures. I use this cloth pin cushion to gently press the clay into the mould and pick up those fine throwing lines I left in the mould when I threw them. This little tool also does a really good job of smoothing out any imperfections. Around the rim, I start to work on my bark texture. I rub wet clay onto the bowl, which leaves an earthy texture. I enjoy these slow rhythmic tasks and using my hands as the tools as much as possible. I then go in with my pinky to score the texture and create a pattern inspired by striations in bark. When working in this way, it is almost trance-like and I'm in a place of calm. 
here I am working on the rim of the bowl and making the edge where I cut with a scalpel disappear. I also work the edge with my pinky, which brings the striations right up to the rim. Doing something repetitive like this, I think allows you to work without thinking. It becomes automatic. I like directly affecting the clay surface with my fingers rather than with fancy tools. I threw a tall foot for my bowls using the banding wheel. I could have done this directly on the piece, but I find with such a tall foot it is just easier to make it separately. I also could have produced a more precise foot on my electric wheel, but there is something so satisfying about turning the wheel by hand. One day I would love to have a go on a Japanese cake wheel. I slip and score the bowl and join it to the foot. To transition the foot into the bowl and ensure a secure fix, I add a coil of clay on the inside and blend it in. When it comes to glazing, again, I really enjoy hand processes. Instead of the dip and go method, I like to combine glazes and hand paint them to produce interesting variations in the glaze. I also use contrasting slips and stains to highlight the textures that I create. These are the finished bowls and plates. I have a turquoise and a dark colour variation, and I am working on a third light variation. These are my first samples of this style, and I will be making more for a big upcoming market. I will be posting my third colour combination on Instagram, so please take a look.